Um, I am Julie Anderson. I am currently a project manager at Sideways 8. Um, I have worked in various things, have done various roles in uh, the web development sphere, so to speak, for the last 20 years. Um, I ran my own agency. It was very small, basically, when my kids were growing up. So um, I've attempted to code, um, and, uh, and then I did some sales. But I, what I found is I really like uh, project management, which apparently nobody else does, so, um, which is great. Um, I have um, been married for 25 years and have two kids that are almost grown up, not quite. Um, and then um, I got a couple of, yeah, it's not detecting it, sorry. Anyway, they, um, and what else? Oh, I'm a, a jogger, not a, not a runner. Um, and, I've, and a cyclist, and that's about it. Oh, and I'm a rabid North Carolina Tar Heel fan, so yes. So yeah, we we uh, we get a little crazy. <laughs> no, it's not gonna. Um, well, I mean, I can kind of. I just don't want to hold everything up. It's only twenty minutes. Speak graphically. <laughs> Speak graphically. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, to start, you know, everybody starts off with they. You've got, you're starting off, you need it to build a portfolio, right? So you'll do anything. You will barter with anyone. You will, you're just trying to build a decent portfolio. So at one point I was bartering with somebody who was a massage therapist. That was great. Um, but then I um, signed up to work, do my, ex, my, my friend's ex-husband's website. Um, and he was selling beef jerky and had flaming logos that he stood behind me and said, move it five pixels this way, four pixels down you got to get past that stage, right? So you get past that and you get to, you know, where you're working 40 hours a week or your staff is working 40 hours a week and, you know, you just have to start weeding out some of these people. Um, and then how do you go about doing that? How do you know which ones are the ones that you need to let go of? Um, and so you, you need to start thinking about some of them are annoying, but you're still making money with them. And so you kind of got to balance that. Some of them are your favorite friends, the people you want to hang out and have a beer with, but you're losing money working with them. And so you've got to start thinking, have tools to figure out which ones are which, ones are which and which ones you can, should be cu uh, cutting loose. So nothing? <laughs> All right. Well, let me at least have it and so I can kind of fit, follow along with my... Um, I, I have a great picture of my um, of the the uh, logo that was so that's when I'm really sorry you don't get to see yeah um, flaming beef jerky um, so okay nothing's working <laughs> sorry guys um, well so essentially what you need to do is you find out um, and that basically what what you need to figure out what your gross profit margin needs to be in order to um, and to see if people are really, you're really making money. And I also shouldn't mention that I'm, um, I was an economics major, so I'll try not to delve into too much of that business stuff. But you've got to have goals, okay? So if you set your gr gross profit margin, you'll know whether or not somebody is profitable. Um, gross profit margin is, for those of you who've forgotten since those classes, is the portion of money left over after you have paid all the bills, you've paid for the cost of goods. Because we are a labor intensive industry, um, and primarily because we have WordPress that's free, um, our cost of goods are generally the cost of labor. Um, you know, we usually, at least at our agency, we pass the cost of uh, plugins off to the clients. We have them buy them. Um, so that's really where our major cost comes from. But if you sell a site for $10,000 and it costs you 8,000 in labor to build, do you think you've made money? And you know, when you first look at it, you say yes, but you have to start thinking about your overhead. Um, how many hours did you not clock if you're the agency owner? Because um, that happens a lot. Um, and what did it cost to get this business? And what else could you be doing with your time that you're spending on this business? So um, unfortunately, I can't show you this. But say you set your budget, your gross profit margin for 50%. Um, we use a tool called Harvest. And you, we can set a budget for that. Um, 
in harvest it says enter the amount you plan to invoice. We just say this is the amount um, that we are going to count. So we have all the o other leftovers for the gross profit margin. Um, and it'll track what, you, um, what you're doing hourly. Um, and all the hourly costs go in and it'll show me my budget. Um, and I don't know, I'm going to hold this up even though it, you probably can't see it, but it shows me, oops, hold on. Um, it shows me when I'm going over that goal budget um, real clearly. And I also, it shows me what percentage of the budget I'm currently at. And so if I'm still in discovery and I'm over 15% of my budget, I know I'm in trouble. So I know I, can, I need to dial it back. But um, it's really a great tool and I think it's free. It's pretty close. Okay, so what does Harvest, harvest, harvest app. Yeah. Um, now what does this do for you? It lets you know which of your clients cost you the least to make happy. And then those are the ones you want to keep. So I have a, we're, we're obsessed with Einstein and, at our company. So I have a picture of Einstein um, riding his bike, You're looking very happy. Um, so again, unfortunately, sometimes you find out that your obnoxious clients are actually the ones that are profitable. Um, and worse, you find out that the nice ones aren't um, profitable. So I promise, though, if you handle the breakup well, you can still have a beer with them and you won't be able to afford to buy it for them. <laughs> um, but one of the other factors beyond the money is which ones are emotionally draining. Um, there are people that you work with, and Brett's here, we, we had, he kept handing off all the clients that were emotionally draining. Um, we finally got rid of some of them. Um, no one on our team wanted to work with a couple of them. They found it demoralizing when they constantly berate you, they're just not, and it, it's not that they're not just pleasant, they're just downright mean. Um, everything for them is an emergency. Everything that comes over through your support. Hot, 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 I need you, they need you on this today, and it's something they've caused. And it's, you know, six o'clock on Friday night, and yeah. So, I call them soul suckers, and um, my, my graphic is of a dementor, so. Um, but uh, life is way too short to work with soul suckers. Okay, so you've made your decision, you've got your short list of people that you can start weeding out. What do you do now? You've gotta have a sales pipeline. Um, you've gotta have either somebody who's gonna do that for you and bring them in. You've gotta have someone to replace. You know that there's more work out there for you. And a lot of times if you're working with the soul suckers, you're not taking the time to go do, the to build your sales pipe. They're, they beat you down and you don't want to go. So balancing those things out, um, there are several talks here about sales pipelines. I suggest you take it to either go and take notes or find somebody who likes that part. Um, I also want to mention the concept of opportunity costs. And again, this goes back to my economics background, so I'm sorry. But opportunity cost is the potential gain by making other choices. So if instead of working with this client, who's not making, who I'm not making a whole lot of money with, I can work with this one, you know, but you gotta make sure you're not just doing the grass is always greener. So balance those things out. Um, one of the other things that I would say we do, we've gotten a lot better at doing is keeping records of the steps we've taken with clients, um, what warnings we've given them, what suggestions we've made that they haven't taken, which is probably why they're called, have a hot, hot, hot issue on Friday night. Um, we don't just keep this in email. Um, we project managers change, um, you know, the developer changes. If we keep it in teamwork, um, that's another app that we use to um, just basically manage our projects. Um, but we're, it's really easy for us to go back and find out what we've done and what um, how we've what steps we've already taken. And when the client comes back and says, "Why are you letting me go?" Well, on this day we did this, and on this day we did this. You've got it all right there in front of you. So you figured out, you know, you have a reason for them now uh, to go ahead and cut them loose. Um, the first thing, be polite. You don't know who they talk to. You don't know if you'll ever need them for anything. I mean, if there's the soul suckers, I'd say you don't have to be quite so polite, but there are some people that you're moving on from. You know, they don't have as big a budget as you're now shooting for. Be polite to them. Um, 
and you don't have you can you should give them a reason um, if you can so that they know um, but you can also always use the um, it's not you it's me um, excuse so um, that one works really well uh, but it does work as far as especially if you are moving into a niche if you are now going to work with just restaurants you can tell them I'm sorry I can no, you know I'm not really going to be able to help you with your mom and pop store um, so we give them time um, it's in our contract but we also just out of courtesy um, don't just cut them loose um, if they're not your favorite then you give them 30 days if they're someone you like you give them longer um, you know give them a couple of months and then we also um, try to help them find a replacement again if they're the ones you don't you don't have anybody you dislike enough to to send them then they just have to they're on their own but um, we do a lot of networking through um, meetups and word camps and there's a lot of people who would like your lower budget projects so if you're moving up you know hand them off give them somebody that you can you feel um, will be able to help them um, so just kind of in summary um, unfortunately you know what I will put this on slack um, for you because you can't see the um, we use Harvest app to, to set the budgets know which ones are profitable um, we use teamwork to keep track of records I also found a great site that has actually scripts to use with your clients um, and you know how a nice kind of template it, we've had it is not not one of them but that is uh, where it comes from and then um, I just kind of clue through one other resource that I use a lot as a project manager that I think can be used by a lot of other people especially if you're a small uh, you know if you're a freelancer or um, it's called the digital project and it has all kinds of great resources there but and that's what I've got did anybody have any questions